Coming at you from the vaults of unreleased Canon Film Productions, you know, the producers of schlocktastic classics such as Death Wish and Superman 4 The Quest for Peace, comes the story of the worst Spider-Man movie ever imagined that doesn't feature a blue-faced DDM monster. Guys, welcome to Rejected Movie Ideas, where we celebrate Spidey's victorious debut in the Marvel Cinematic Universe by digging up some of his most embarrassing abandoned film projects. And few were more embarrassing than Canon Film's painful attempts to bring your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man to the big screen, or as was the case for most Canon Films, the $5 bargain bin at your local Walmart. Now to understand exactly why this movie was doomed from the get-go, you have to know what Canon Films represented for the world of film in the 80s. And what they represented was absolute garbage. However, if there's anything good about producing movies for dirt cheap, it's that the studio didn't need large box office numbers to be financially successful. Therefore, Canon became a magnet for scripts and properties that couldn't find financing anywhere else in Hollywood. And like flies to a pigsty, Marvel Comics broke a deal with Canon to produce Spider-Man's official big screen debut. I say official only because there's no way we're counting Japanese Spider-Man fighting that thing as a real movie. Unfortunately for Marvel, Canon's ability to craft horrible movies wasn't only due to their limited production budget, but sometimes to the utter misunderstanding of the stories they were trying to tell. This is why producers of the would-be film reached out to sci-fi horror writer Leslie Stevens to write a story about this so-called Spider-Man. Demonstrating a complete lack of understanding of the character, Stevens proceeded to write a story about a photographer who is kidnapped by a mad scientist and mutated into a grotesque half-tarantula, half-man monster. Now this Spider-Man now has to fight his way out of the lab through a legion of other butt-ugly mutants. When Marvel asked someone from canon for an explanation of this clusterfuck of a story, they disappointedly answered, the producers didn't really know what Spider-Man was. They thought it was like the Wolfman. Inspired by staring idiocy straight in the face, Stan Lee himself pushed to get a proper script made by writers who actually understood the basic concept of what Spider-Man was. A couple of weeks later, a script was written that featured Peter Parker as a high school student and pitted him against one of his most famous villains, Dr. Otto Octavius himself. And while that script is nowhere near as good what we eventually saw in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2, it was good enough for Canon Films and they quickly assigned veteran schlock director Albert Pion to helm the film. However, by this point in Canon Film history, their company was finally starting to suffer the financial consequences of being horrible at their jobs. You see, kids, the year was 1987, and for some dumb reason, Canon thought they could play with the big leagues in Hollywood and turned out three of their most expensive films ever, Superman 4, Masters of the Universe, and that weird Stallone arm wrestling movie, Over the Top. Holy crap, I remember that thing. Unsurprisingly, all three movies flopped at the box office, and the company soon was laughed out of existence. With the studio now dead, the rights to make a Spider-Man movie reverted back to Marvel, where they stayed safe from harm's way for years. That is, until Sony Pictures got a hold of them and forced Spidey to fight that horrible EDM monster, got him to kill his girlfriend, and prematurely ended a promising young actor's career as a superhero. There have been many attempts to bring Spider-Man to the big screen, including this one in the 80s. Shortly after, there was a James Cameron project in the 90s that we talked about in an earlier episode, so click me to watch that episode and learn all about that. If you like my face and what I do with it, you can also check out my channel, Practical Folks, on YouTube. We do a lot of fun stuff there. And also be sure to like this video, comment, and subscribe for more rejected movie ideas. Thanks a lot, guys. Be good people.